everybody, this is Caitlin here and welcome to Card Game Wednesday, the day of the week where we enjoy all things card game related and it's been a little bit of a while since we've had a deck profile on the channel actually, mainly because we had obviously Echoes of the New World and then we had the starter decks coming out for Rhea Cluster and then we actually got the first set of Rhea Cluster cluster ancient knights coming out so i was you know debating with myself about what i would want to make and first up here we have a little mishmash of like a couple of old friends with a couple of new friends and everything so the idea of this deck is kind of centered around the idea of kame who is a demon from the new set um, of real cluster from ancient knights him working together with lunya aka aka Nyarlathotep. So we are using this ruler. I know a lot of people would say that um, currently the starter deck rulers may be from um, Lapis Cluster. Might not like like work out as well nowadays because obviously going back then we have, the two best ones I would feel like would be um, Mikage and potentially Feasting. However, I feel like using Lunia with Kame is actually a good idea. This build I did play at my locals. Um, it didn't do too well. I managed to get one win. Um, the, my only problem was going up against like ones that were say very counter spell heavy or ones that were like maybe a lot faster than me for setting up so like the, I went up against the Lumia Hook one and that was an absolute pain because I got absolutely wrecked by Hook not allowing me to get basically any more than two stones so that was a bit of a bummer um, but other than that I did have a lot of fun playing this deck it was a lot of fun I would maybe change a couple of things but right now this is my current build as it is right now I'm just, I will be making changes and whatnot and if I've made any big significant changes I might redo this deck profile and update it for you guys but as it is it's okay I, I do have like some ideas of what I want to change but I'll just like go view the deck profile as it is right now so obviously we have Lunia the Wolf Girl as our ruler I've gone over this card multiple times Times, but just in case anyone's new to the channel or new to force a will i'll go over the ruler so she is a red ruler obviously her judgment is four which is two fire and two void she comes with energize which um if you are going second then you can get the energize coin to spend for one fire will and obviously they've updated the rules where normally when you're rolling a dice to see who goes first the one who rolls the highest has to go first so you are no longer allowed to choose whether you get to go first or second if you high roll and get the highest number you have to go first so you don't get the choice anymore and whenever a resonator you control attacks this card deals 100 damage to target resonator which is like the whole idea of the stick whatever and then when she flips over she becomes Nyarlo the tip I can never say this properly I usually call her Nyarla uh, the true false legend she has 1200 attack and 800 defense she comes with swiftness and limit two so basically whenever she attacks uh, or blocks you have to remove a limit counter from her and at the end of turn if there are no limit counters on this card she goes back to being a ruler she also has the ability that when she enters the field she deals 800 damage to target resonator but then she doesn't have the ping ability which is why we don't really want to flip her we are only flipping her if it's like say a last resort for like a big push of damage to win the game otherwise we would try not to flip her because she's more useful on this side Going into our resonators here, it is a little bit of a chop and change kind of deck here. So there's a couple of things I will definitely change about this deck. Um, also trying to match up the sleeves, whatever, with the little red liar girl and whatnot, or the little dread rather. So for this deck, I have like one version of uh, Red Riding Hood, the rainbow in the heavens. I was debating about whether or not to have this card in the deck. I feel like I don't want the card in the deck because obviously I'm only running it one of. I would run it as a four of, as a four drop, but she doesn't immediately get swiftness, which is the thing. I'm thinking of maybe replacing this and potentially Kane, you can hear it, see back here, with Red Cap because obviously Red Cap is weaker. It doesn't get flying, but it has got swiftness and it can replace itself when it dies. So that's mainly the reason. But um, currently my build had one of this. So she's a one red drop. 400 400 with will of hope which doesn't really like matter in this deck she has a seal where basically if you have at least three magic stones she gains flying and swiftness and that's about it but not really too much i didn't play her very often i think i only played her twice in any of my games um but the real kind of thing here that i liked here is i like the canes not sure if they're fast enough because they, they are like easy one drop trump blockers and whatnot and if i don't block and at, at the end of my opponent's turn i can just use their ability to tap and deal 200 damage to them which was quite funny because obviously they're 400 so it's like it's not like easily killable like maybe on the first turn depending on what your opponent draws and whatnot or like how much they want to spend to kill just this zero attack card or whatever that only deals 200 each time it taps but I might drop this down to three potentially replace it with maybe two or three red caps just for a little bit of swiftness damage and whatnot potentially but I do like the idea of running the canes I'd maybe maybe not run them at four I'd maybe run them at three I think 
I definitely want to run four now of these boars because at first I was like, oh, the boars are not too good or whatever, but for a swiftness deck um, or one that focusing on getting high damage in very quickly, boar is a must have. Of course, it has the like stipulation where obviously it has to attack if you are playing it and it only has 300 defense, but at the same time, it's got first strike. So when it is attacking, it deals the battle damage first to the blocker or, or the attacked object or whatever. So it's not taking damage first. The only way it would die is if um, your opponent has a kill spell or whatever that's like, hey, um, it's going to like, you know, explode it for like 500 or something with a lightning strike and everything like that. So I would maybe run this at four and maybe drop down the Holiosaurus or whatever, because I'm not quite sure if I'd like the Holiosaurus. So we're running this at three currently. I'm thinking of bumping it up to four. I also have three of the Ho Holiosaurus. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, but we have three Holiosaurus, which is not a true drop. This one's a bit like a bit stronger in the defense. It's a 600-600. Doesn't have swiftness, which is the downside for it. But when it enters, it deals 300 damage to target Resonator, which is potentially quite good for, say, pinging uh, our opponent, like, say, with a... Um, a lethal arrow or with a demon flame or even with a thun uh not a thunder a lightning strike because the whole idea is that we get in like the kind of ping damage and then we try and deal the final blow with a spell so that's why i'm running three of these i'm not quite sure whether i'm going to replace them or not i feel like i might but um potentially they're still staying there as a three drop I am also running the combo of having Bassett with Haster. I'm mainly running Haster because it is a good way to deal heavy damage with comboing with Neurohotep. And Bass is really here, or Bassett, depending on how you want to do it, is so that we can pump up um, Haster's damage or whatever when it does swing and hit a Resonator. So obviously, Bassett, the Goddess of Cats, is a two drop. It's one red and one void. It is 300, 700. So again, it's not going to be really be swinging for attacks. Most of the time, it will probably be defending. But obviously, her ability here is if a Cthulhu you control would deal damage to J slash Resonator, it deals damage, double that damage instead. And it has the inheritance to put five limit counters on a target Cthulhu, but I never really use it for that. I mainly use it to play it. Um, so obviously with that in conjunction with Haster, it would mean that whenever Haster swings, he deals 400 damage to target J slash Resonator normally with um, Bass in control here. He would deal 800 instead. And then obviously there is the 100 ping damage coming from uh, Lunia. Because sadly, Lunia is a human on her ruler side. She's not a Cthulhu. So that doesn't work there. But um, so essentially he can ping a Resonator for 900. And that's just before he's even attacked. He doesn't even have to attack. Well, he has to declare the attack first. But that's even before he's dealt his attack damage to something. He obviously has like swiftness only if you're using Lunia. Which is the only reason I'm really running him in this deck. Because he is super, super good with Lunia. And his limit is two, so basically he has the same stipulation with Lunya, uh, not Lunya, Nyarlathotep, where basically after he's attacked or he's blocked twice, um, he goes returning to the hand, however, at the end of the turn, once he loses all the limit counters. And essentially, yep, yeah, that's it for him. The only issue is you need to be very careful about the order in which you play, because obviously if your opponent has no resonators on the field, he still has to ping a target J slash resonator, which means including yourself. So if Haster is the only thing on the field, or say um, say if Bass is sitting there on the field, he's going to be dealing 900. So essentially he's either dealing 900 to the Bass, depending on what else you have on the field, or to himself, which could kill him. So you may want to be careful about when you're playing Bass in conjunction with Haster, um, just so that you don't end up having to destroy the Haster straight away. That is one of the things I had to be careful of, because obviously when he's dealing double damage, he can kill himself essentially, he can explode himself. So we're running two Bass, and then we're running four Hasters in this build currently. I chucked in two of this card as well, which I'm going to murder the pronunciation, so apologies here, which is Archaeopteryx Arche or something like that. I cannot pronounce it. It's a dino bird. It's essentially a fiery dino bird. It's a four cost, 800, 800. It has flying and first strike. The only reason I'm running this in this deck is because this deck has a problem where it doesn't have really any flyers. The only flyer it did have, which I am considering dropping now, is the little red. So I felt like we needed some kind of flying power. This card didn't really do too much for me. I also have like a little a full art of it or whatever, but it didn't do too much because at the same time it's like it's a four drop and I would rather play Kane over this card because Kane is like the real kind of mechanic for this deck. He's like the, the go-to hitter for this deck and whatnot. So I didn't really prioritize playing this over Kane. I might drop this depending on whether I can get a different flyer for fire. Um, because I'm mainly wanting to make all the Resonators fire ones so that we can definitely play them no matter what. Because it is technically a black-red deck, but there's only like a smidgen of black. There's not too much black in this deck. It's only really in the spells uh, and in the stone base, technically. So I might drop this for something else if I can find a different 
a red flyer that's a bit better i might drop this but we're running two of that anyway currently and then the main gimmick for the deck here is came obviously came came is going to be comboing up with neural flow tip they're going to have some demon cthulhu fun here so came the demon of ice or came whatever you want to pronounce it as he is a four drop he's two fire two void he's 1000 1000 so already he has better stats than the flying dino bird he is a demon when he enters the field we can recover a target resonator with which is two cost or less that our opponent controls we gain control of it until end of turn and it gains swift until end of turn which is very very nice whenever a resonator you control attacks this card deals 200 damage to your opponent again so the kind of ping damage here which we're trying to like mount up and whatnot and we can pay a fire and banish a resonator then this card gains swiftness until end of turn so ideally what the turn would go would be like is we would play game we would steal a two drop from our opponent maybe a decent two drop we would make that two drop because now it has swiftness on our side of the field we would make it swing Kane would deal 200 damage to our opponent. That Resonator that is attacking would deal its damage and also 100 damage to a Resonator your opponent controls if they are still controlling something that we can target. Then we would pay the fire and banish the Resonator that we just attacked with uh, to get rid of it to give Kane swiftness. Kane would then swing for 1,000 and also deal the 200 damage from when he... Uh, Swings because he is technically a resonator because it's not other resonators, it is he includes himself as well, and that would also include Lunia's ping damage of 100 from him swinging. So that would be the ideal play if we had multiple games, that would also be pretty epic as well. But the main idea for the deck is to try and get came out, steal something, use that combo, and whatnot to deal impressive damage to our opponent, and basically hopefully leave them with no blockers, which is why we're running three copies of this. I have one copy of Heteroclite Excalibur, which is a one drop. It's not quite cast, but you can remove a target resonator from the game. You lose 500 life. I'm only running one of this because I don't like the idea of having loss of life. So I know people would say this is like a super good card. And I agree that it's a super good card if like you uh, don't mind losing life or paying for like paying using your life points. But at the same time, I'm just like, maybe one is just enough because I don't want to focus too heavy on paying too much life because we are leaving ourselves quite open because we are like going heavy in on attack so we don't really have much defense wise so that is why I'm only running one of this I'm also running two copies of this card here which I quite like in particular it is the tactics of the dark elves it's a three cost sadly not a uh, quick cast but it's a three cost it's two dark and one void up to two target resonators cannot be destroyed until end of turn and gain whenever this card deals damage to a resonator, destroy that resonator until end of turn. So this is a good way of even just swinging in and being rest assured that we are going to destroy anything that blocks. So our opponent might not be keen enough to like block with anything because obviously then they'll have to be like if we deal damage then they will lose that resonator and obviously our resonators don't take any damage so we can just mindlessly swing with anything that we want. We will still be doing the ping damage from your alpha tip. We will still be doing 200 if we've got K on the field. And unless our opponent really wants to lose anything, we'll be able to hit them in the face. So ideally, this would be used in conjunction to make sure that we can just swing for lethal uh, to make our opponent either like force them to either block and destroy whatever they're blocking with or just take it to the face and go to like game and whatnot. We are also running three copies, three lovely copies here of the artwork here, of Fiend Fire, which is a card that is actually featuring Kame. Kind of works quite well with them, I feel like, but obviously you need to spend a lot of will to use this. It is one fire as the base cost and an X. This card deals 200 damage multiplied by X to target player or resonator. If you spend darkness to play this card, you gain that much life, which is the main reason why this deck is also a um, darkness fire deck with only like a little hint of darkness, mainly so I can use the darkness in playing this and gain life as well. So even though like we've got Heteroclite Excalibur, we might not be guaranteed to pull this off every single time because obviously depending on how much we want to spend, uh, depends on how much we have, like how many stones that we spend to play this. So obviously if we, we need to spend at least six if we want to deal a thousand damage to something. So that is quite a lot of stones considering that we want to try and be quite quick in dealing damage to our opponent, which we might not get up to six stones in our game. So which is why I'm only running it as three. But it is a, a very good card. I do love this card. We're running a lot of burn spells, obviously, a lot of ones that can destroy things pretty quickly for low cost. We've got two lightning strikes, pretty simple. Deals 500 damage to either AJ slash Resonator or our opponent. We can use that to, like, snipe and damage um, with the ping effect. We also are running four demon flames and four lethal arrows, which basically do the same thing for different things. Demon flame has the step plus where it can also deal 500 damage to a Resonator or it can um, destroy a Resonator that has been damaged this turn. And obviously, it, this is my old copies, however, of uh, Demon Flame, because I need to find my Vinkov 3 copies. Um, they do have quick cast, it just doesn't have the, like, in the old prints, whatever, it doesn't have the kind of, like, lightning symbol on the top here, because this is the old kind of card style, whatever. 
So we've got four of those and we have four lethal arrows and we've got a lovely full art version of this, which is very, very nice. This one is just simply destroy target damage resonator. So it does really the same thing, minus dealing the 500 uh, damage option or whatever, but it doesn't for black. And then last but not least, we have two of the statue in the secret temple, which is a two cost void addition. Magic stones you control produce basically all colors and you can basically pay all colors and banish this card to put a 1000-1000 light angel resonator token with flying into the field. This is mainly here so that in, on the off chance that we uh, don't get the black stones that we need from our jewel stones, we can play this and at least fix our stones for the rest of the game because I am running like only four jewel stones um, and six red stones because darkness is isn't really a very 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 vital thing in the deck it's just a really handy thing to have and I feel like I don't want to splash Gil's um dark red stones just to have like a bit more of a stronger player base when it comes to the stones and whatnot and I don't want to overload the the stone deck with special magic stones in case it becomes a problem so that's why we're only running four magic stone of scorched bales and we're running six ma uh, fire magic stones in total so that has been this deck profile, guys, of this idea. I, I guess I'm going to call it, like, King's Ping Patrol or something, or Kame's Ping Patrol, something like that. Um, There will be a couple of changes that I'll probably make to this deck once I've done a little bit more testing. Might take it back again to my locals and try it out in another tournament, see how to do it fair in that one. Or I might bring in a totally different deck and show you some of the results. We have recorded a couple of um, feature matches or whatever that I've still to kind of do, like edit and do commentary over and everything. So you might see this deck in play a couple of times in the next couple of weeks because that was the main deck I was testing out. Let me know, guys, if there's any rulers or any kind of resonator or mechanics or themes that you would like me to try and build decks for. I am hopefully going to be building more decks in the future now that I've got like a couple more cards that I was looking for and whatnot. Let me know down below what you're excited to see and if you are excited for Advent of the Demon King, which will be coming out in December obviously for force at will so until next time guys I will see you all later